Alrighty, let's see. Our next question is from Mads. Uh, tips for increasing testosterone. Hey Rob, in a previous Q&A, you talked about how muscle gain and hypertrophy is caused by calorie surplus and progressive overload. You also mentioned that gaining muscle is, without a doubt, easier if you have high, t high testosterone. Calorie sur surplus and progressive overload is easy, but how do I increase my testosterone? You mentioned that there are a number of different tactics that you can use. My testosterone is not low, but it's definitely not high either. I'm 27 and my testosterone is 640 nanograms per deciliter and my free testosterone is 16.36 man this is a good question so a young guy mm -hmm. uh it, it, it's His so testosterone is lower than my dad's yeah who's 70 70 yeah, yeah yeah which he's just kind of a stud so you're, you're well no but i mean also because yeah. i know you've talked before about how our parents and grandparents generation as a baseline had higher testosterone than yeah, Kurt, Kurt Parsley has some numbers that he, he quotes that uh, my grandparents' generation, appeared both men and women, appeared to have testosterone levels about three times on average what we're, what we're seeing today. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's probably not optimal from a recovery standpoint. Um, this is the thing, again, we don't really know why this is changing. Is it xenoestrogens? Is it a change in the gut microbiome? Is it all of these things? Uh, the, the stuff that can definitely help, usually something that looks kind of akin to a lower carb diet tends to help because people lose body fat. If we're carrying, it, it's interesting on the testosterone story, specifically with men, um, being super lean is antagonistic towards testosterone. So once you get below about 10, maybe 8% as a baseline, your testosterone will tend to start dropping because of some stress response mm -hmm. issues. Some people run leaner and high testosterone, but uh, this is again, you know, kind of generalization. But then once you start cresting up above maybe about 14, 15% body fat, you have enough fat mass, which contains an enzyme called aromatase, which can convert the testosterone into estrogen. And the interesting kind of downward spiral with that is the brain doesn't sense testosterone levels, it senses estrogen levels. So if estrogen levels are high, the brain says, oh, we're good with testosterone. I don't need to stimulate luteinizing hormone and, you know, ping the lighting cells to really, you know, release the, the precursors and cofactors involved with the whole uh, testosterone production cascade. So someone who is overweight will have low testosterone, which tends to feed into overweight, which then elevates their estrogen levels, which suppresses testosterone, testosterone production at the brain. And then even if they go and get some sort of uh, uh, testosterone replacement therapy, if the doctor is ham-handed with this, they just give them a big, huge dose of testosterone, which further suppresses <laughs> endogenous testosterone production. So. With, with someone like this, uh, some things like zinc citrate have been shown to be pretty effective, about 50 milligrams per day. You have to be careful with doing that consistently because it can deplete your uh, uh, copper levels. Um, so when you say careful doing it consistently, like once a week, every other day? You, like you could do it maybe like four or five days on and then take a four or five days off. And or you could use a supplement like Jaro's um, zinc citrate, which comes with copper, like five milligrams copper. So that's something to do is to make sure that you're supplementing with that. If your body fat levels are north of about 14, 15, like if they're in there, then I would try to do some things to get leaner and see if that improves testosterone levels. Sleep is going to be a huge factor. So what time are you going to bed? What time are you waking up? What's the sleep quality? Uh, are you in a completely black room? Midnight. Earlier is yeah. better. Yeah, yeah. As many we, hours of sleep before midnight as possible. Yeah, yeah, ideally, which is harder in the, the summer months, depending on where you, you are and what latitude you're at. But improving sleep, improving body composition, those are the places that I would look first. And I would really dig into the diet and lifestyle features first and figure out what, if any, bump you can get from that. And only then, if we aren't seeing favorable changes, do we start working with a knowledgeable functional medicine doctor, like anti-aging doctor, and starting with things like Clomid and some mild aromatase inhibitors and stuff like that to try to goose endogenous production first. Like particularly someone that's 27, like yeah, you do yeah. not want this this person getting into a, uh, uh, you know, a, a 
testosterone replacement therapy scenario. I guess one other question is, is uh, for Mads, has he ever suffered a significant traumatic brain injury? And sometimes you may not be aware of that, but like if you played youth football, if you played hockey, if you fell off of a trampoline or, you know, like, so this could be something too that is part of the sleep piece. If sleep seems to be pretty good, but it, uh, uh, you know, everything isn't really kicking over, then there can be some sleep studies, there could be some brain imaging and some, some testing to look at what's going on between the pituitary and the other elements of this story. So that, that's kind of getting in a, another layer and it's going to be a while, but we will have some material that's going to really help people unpack this stuff in a completely systematic process because there's so much shitty information on this and it's so confusing and you need a lot of nuance. There is never a one size fits all approach on this other than maybe sleep better like that. that, that one. That, that's about the only one that I, I, I would be, you know, that's going to benefit virtually everybody. But occasionally you have these outliers of people who have a particular type of depression or mania and they actually benefit from certain periods of sleep deprivation. So again, there's really? an exception to fucking wow. everything. This is why wow. when people just paint everything with these broad brush strokes. Like there's just seemingly an exception to everything. So yeah, I know that I was kind of all over the map on that, but it, it, it's a lot of stuff. And um, we'll be doing some work with Kirk Parsley in the future to get some materials so that people can really navigate this story in an effective way.